We're jumping back into the discussion. We're pleased to be joined by Keith Scholl again, former Rough Rider, former Ottawa Red Black. And there is Sholo joining us today from, I, I'm guessing, northern Alberta, Sholo. Is that where we catch you at? Northern Alberta. Rod, how are you doing? How are Real? you doing? Good to talk to you guys. Good to talk to you guys. I'm excited. Well, hey. I'm excited. I haven't I... talked to anybody in the media for like a year. And You're it, lucky. And it's starting to get to me, and it's coming out of my, coming out of my veins, and I just need to open up a big mouth. <laughs> I heard... When we were debating whether Maz should rest these guys on the weekend or not, our producer said you were grinning like a butcher's dog with the argument. So is Maz right or not? Well, you're either going to win or you're not on, on the playoff game. So what difference does it make if you lose the last one? You know, because they're going over to the East anyway, regardless, right? So you might as well rest them. Might as well rest them. Don't get beat up by the riders and life will be good. So why not race, rest them? Is that good enough for you guys? Hey, I'll take it. I'll take it from the horse's mouth. Absolutely. Well, think about it. You're playing a team that actually, because the way I look at it, if they lose and Calgary wins, they're in second. Is that correct? If they lose. Yeah. The Riders? Yes. Yeah. 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 Riders are going, they're winning so they this game to win. no matter what. Yeah. The Riders win and they're in first. That's, what That's I'm all saying. they think. Yeah. They're, they win, they're in first. But if they lose and Calgary wins, then they're in second. Correct. Mm -hmm. So the Riders are coming out to put out the, they're coming out full, full fledged. They're right. coming out to, to win. And why would you put your players? You know you're going to be in fourth. You know they're going over to the East final. They're 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 already going over to the East. There doesn't really make any difference if you're uh, if you win this one for us, for the Edmonton. So you might as well uh, rest your guys and get them ready to go. So it makes so, sense. So, it, so it makes sense. Though. It makes sense. And you don't have two weeks. It's only one week. Okay. I couldn't agree one more. I, yep. I do. I do too. Now, Keith. Typically, though, what's done in this situation is they give them a series or two just to satisfy those out there that say, well, at least they made some kind of an effort, but you don't care about that. You, you, you just figure, like, well, what's the, if you're going to play them one series, then why bother playing them at all? Is that right? Well, it's not like you're doing it for everybody. There's only going to be a handful of guys. The teams aren't big enough to have everybody right. sit anyway. You're right. only talking about a quarterback and a couple of their players. And you're going to lose anyway. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. Anyway. Not that he's ah, they're taking it back. Taking it back. Is, Who is knows? It? Who knows? Who knows? Is there something to be said for the routine, though? Uh, I mean, we know the players are creatures of habit and creatures of schedule. And just going through the routine, especially for a guy like Trevor Harris, I mean, I know he's a veteran, but he has been off with an injury. Um, just, you know, getting the taped up, going out there, just, just getting the, you know, the juices flowing as opposed to, you know, he, he had one game. And, and now they're going to expect him to go on the road in a hostile environment and win a playoff game? Yeah, that's true. But he's he's been around for a few years now. Um, Fair you know, he's been and, and winning for a few years now. Um, so and it's not like he's not coming to the game. It's still an it's still in Edmonton. So he's still going to be there. He's still going to go through the motions. He'll be on the sideline to get a whole new perspective, uh, you know, different view on it. So yes and no. Sure, there is a little bit. But if you know you're only going to go in for a series or two. You you might you might be sitting there and not read that uh, backside uh, backside mm. defensive end the riders get and get smacked in the back and be out for the entire playoffs because hey I wasn't paying much attention. Sholo, uh, by the way, it's awesome to chat with you this morning. Um, when you left, I was devastated because uh, I thought you were going to be here forever. But we don't need to go down that road. But we were talking about you the other day, and somebody said, "What's Sholo doing?" And they said, "He's up in Rochester, Alberta, running the family business." And I don't even know what that is. It's something to do with ag, or is it not? What's the update right now in Keith Sholigan's life? Uh, Keith Sholigan's life. My wife told me to go get a real job. So uh, <laughs> I'm actually working over at, uh, I started working three months ago over at uh, Agricultural Financial Services Corp, AFSC, in Northern Alberta, in Westlock, Alberta. We, uh, after, uh, after being done, because I got my 10 years in, and uh, after being done, we bought an acreage up here and uh, close to family and everything like that and uh, took a year and uh, continued working with my brother. He runs uh, the purebred division of DLMS, Direct Livestock Management, and uh, he also runs a cattle videoing and marketing company. So I did that for a year and uh, I always kind of said that I've, I've got a degree. I'd like to try to use it a little bit. So I uh, so I started working three months ago for uh, agricultural financial services, doing uh, being like a relationship manager, which has been really good. Which has been really good. It, I wouldn't say it's uh, football, but it's uh, it, uh, it it's good to be home with the kids. And uh, my wife sure is happy that we're not going all over the all over the country anymore. 
Mm -hmm. Well, I'm glad I knew that you'd uh, be a success no matter what you did. So back to the football discussion. What's your take on this 2019 season and the way it's unfolded, particularly in Saskatchewan, your former club? Uh, you know what? I uh, <laughs> They've had a heck of a year, which makes sense considering the coach they got. Guys rally, rally behind him. You know, Dickie, he, uh, he, uh, guys love him. Guys love him. And I, and I haven't completely kept up this year. Um, I've watched, you know, as I can, I started helping coach the high school football team here and it takes up all of your time. Um, so we, uh, I haven't been able to keep up every single game, but the ones that I watched, you know, guys are flying around and playing good football, you know, and they've got some players on there that play with high intensity. And, uh, you got some veterans on that team that do really well. And, uh, so it's always good to see when the riders are winning and it's going to come down to play in Calgary and everybody loves those Calgary Saskatchewan games. So, um, it, it's great for the league and great for the team too. Keith, uh, you know, you were here for the peak of rider euphoria. You know, since I've been following this team since I was a little, little guy, I've never seen anything like sort of that run between about 07 and 13, which you were here for almost all of that. What was that like as a player living in a community where you can't go buy groceries without somebody wearing <laughs> green coming up to you wanting to talk football? I mean, I, I got to think it's a special thing for somebody as passionate as you. Best experience of your life. I was actually talking to somebody yesterday about that because uh, I, had I had to say that I was uh, going to be at an interview today. And uh, <laughs> we were talking about that and we were just like the group of us that came up, like we were a family. You know what I mean? And uh, just like the Western dressers, the Rob Bags, the the Luke Mullinders, the Gino Mikowskis, everybody, Mike McCullough, um, Chris Bess, like everybody knows those guys. And none of us, I think, other than uh, other than the Western dressler really was a, was a star. But we were a family that everybody cared about each other. And uh, you're, it, it's the best experience of your life going to Costco and someone coming up and saying, hey, how's it going? <laughs> so, um, you know, a ran, you know, a, a Saskatchewan fan, which are everywhere. Um, and uh, it best experience of your life and uh, and and just to be a part of that because we were from 07 and uh, 07 they they built something special and they kept and we kept it up especially with the coaches that we had with coach Miller and etch and and, uh, and and everybody that we had you know it was it was a family and we cared about each other and you know the tad corner gays and all those guys like we were we were brothers that would do anything for each other um, so it, it was a great experience and, and by the looks of it you know if they can keep if they do well this year, you know, if they end well this year, they've already done well. You know, they could be building that here, too. We'll have to see. By the way, just for those that don't know, can't imagine they wouldn't, but uh, Sholo played at UCF, Central Florida, 08 with the San Diego Chargers, then came to the Rough Riders, 08 to 2013. Two seasons in Ottawa, 2014-15, 2016 with the Blue Bombers, and uh, 2017 with the Montreal Alouettes. Grey Cup, most valuable Canadian in 2010 in a losing cause, which says a hell of a lot, mm -hmm. the kind of game that he had when you win that award and you lose. And, of course, won the Grey Cup in 2013. Our producer, Clark, wants to know, uh, Sholo, what was it like being a part of the expansion draft and the first year of the Red Blacks? Um, you know what? It was good. They... Uh Good, good organization out there. They, uh, good coaches. They brought in a, a really good coach that kind of wanted to make it a family. Um, so the first year, I know, I know we didn't do very well, um, but uh, they put some really good building blocks down, and they were able to build that on for for two, three years after that. And well, two years after that, they did they did really well because of the foundation that they built. But it was tough. It was tough. I know that uh, I had a hard time with it, of course, uh, until until actual camp started. <laughs> but once camp started, it became football, and you know how football is. You just kind of get into it, and you love every bit of it. Um, but they did a good job building that uh, the culture that they had there i know they kind of went uh it's kind of gone sideways the last year or two um but especially this year but uh um, they built a good strong foundation there and the guys that they brought in were the good character guys and then they just built on that so you know my experience was good um i'd suggest going to ottawa for everybody the town's great the uh the, the lifestyle's good you know and, and the facilities are nice too so it was good it was good and uh and, and the players were 
were were that uh, high character quality players that you kind of enjoyed going to work with every day. So um, it, it was it was good, but again, it was kind of tough tough to leave. <laughs> now that I'm done playing, I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. you, and you talk about leaving uh, leaving the game, but now transitioning. You mentioned you're coaching in high school there. Uh, how has that been going from being the guy on the field to being the guy on the sidelines and and trying to uh, trying to teach and, and trying to direct these next uh, next level of of young men? Uh, well, I got to remember that I'm in a small community and a bunch of these guys have no idea what football even looks like, but I got to remember they're having fun yeah. <laughs> and uh, trying to teach them just the basic things. You know, I've always helped coach with camps and, and stuff like that. And most of those guys, they understand football. So you're just kind of, you're, you're, you're toning, you're kind of uh, critiquing their technique where these guys, you know, a lot of them have never played or even watched football before. So we have to go straight down to the fundamentals and it is rough. You get a complete different um, respect level for your, for your, uh, for your high school coaches growing up about how much work they had to put in, especially for us, they're all volunteers. Um, the amount of work they had to put in and the frustration of dealing with these young kids because um, the good ones, some of them have great attitudes and uh, and the other ones they're, they're a little frustrating because you're like if you just did one or two little things different everything would change and sometimes they don't want to listen and and you can't be too tough on them because we've only got you know 30 kids showing up anyway <laughs> but uh, it, it's a lot of fun uh, the kids are uh, the kids are having a good time and and I try to keep it light and the guys that I can push hard and and I think uh, can help us win I kind of you know push them a little, little bit harder than uh, and, and expect much everything from everybody um, but gives me a complete different uh, respect level for the coaches that I had growing up just because it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work and a lot of time, and, uh, and but you do get the enjoyment of uh, the kids having fun. You know, uh, I tell you what, speaking of having fun, that look on Sholo's face is Sholo. He's always <laughs> smiling. I hope that reflects <laughs> how you feel on the inside, and I really think it does because I've known you a long time. But one more life question, and I've never had a chance to ask you this because your lives move so fast when you're in this. Yeah, you go from northern Alberta to central Florida in Orlando. Um, what was that like? Orlando's fast becoming my favorite spot. Um, how, what was the assimilation like for you there? Um, I was, I was, uh, I was that fat pig who couldn't, uh, who could, who waddled off the plane into a, a wall of humidity. It was horrible. Um, my simulation was good. It got, it got, <laughs> got, uh, got, uh, got, uh, got, uh, mixed in with the guys extremely well great people down there but i remember going on there for my recruiting trip and uh, it was in january and uh, we we had just had a blizzard we left in a blizzard and uh, and i got down there and it was beautiful weather I had a hoodie and a shirts on a hoodie and uh, shorts on the entire three days that i was there absolutely loved it and i was signed up and i was like this is what florida is going to be like and I got down there in august and uh, as soon as those plane doors opened it was like this wall of humidity smashed me right in the face and uh, realized what florida was really like and what it really is like is going to the uh, health center three times a week to get ivs your first two years because you're not used to running and working that hard in that humidity um so that aspect was pretty rough <laughs> that aspect was pretty rough but realistically you know we had a i had a blast um you know you went you went from being up here and we have what 200 people to our biggest game in high school and our first my first game as the true freshman was in uh, against Wisconsin and I was on the field during the third quarter and they did their third quarter uh, yeah. jump and these entire players are and the entire uh, stadium seems like it's going to come apart because how much uh, excitement was in the in the air and that was something you never get you never think you're going to see or even know it's there until you're sitting in the middle of the field and seeing it so um, you know Great experience, great experience, and uh, it, it was something else. But a simulation took me about two years, and then after that, you know, you didn't really want to come back to the cold, but now here I am. Right. Well, I think it took me about two hours. They call it Camping World Stadium right <laughs> now, and I, yeah. I like yeah. the humidity. I'm a big fan, man. Well, Sholo, this has been far overdue. Uh, you are without a doubt rider royalty, so uh, keep in touch, and hopefully you get back here at some point. It's, it's nice to catch up here today. You guys, too. Anytime, guys. If you need the next person to come in and chat, let me know. <laughs> we will. We will. Be careful what you ask for. Keith Scholle. Have a good day, Scholle. All right. Thanks, guys. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.